Uh, you know, my wife uh, just a few weeks ago had a miscarriage, you know, unfortunately. But, you know, these are the type of things that happen in life. We don't have control over our own lives. We don't we we don't t totally own our body, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, with me overcoming everything I overca overcame, you know, and my wife, who really never had many struggles in her life, um, I told her this is the kind of thing, things that happen in life that you're going to have to accept, understand, and just overcome, you know. So you uh, won't know what a true blessing is or true love is in, until you lost a love, you know what I mean? And, you know, I, I couldn't touch the baby. So it's not as emotional for me because it wasn't reality for me. But for her, it was, you know, it's a part of her and her. She could touch it. It's in her. It's a part of her. So I just try to be the best husband I can be and just give her words of motivation to say that, you know, through a loss, you're going to get some blessing. And when we get to have a kid, you're going to know what that having that kid really feel like and, you know, giving them that love. You were at the Today Show like last month. Can you talk to us that experience? Yeah, my wife is work for Today Show. She's a NBC producer for the morning show, and you know I was, you know they brought me in as a, a model, modeling a club Monaco suit, and you know I'm just not showing different one side of me, which is, you know, gruesome fights and. You know, I mean, blood, guts, and spit knocking everywhere. I showed them, you know, a different side of me by going out there and putting the suit on, looking good in it, and, you know, support my wife, make her look good at her job, let her know she can get her husband to come in and do stuff like that. I'm glad that, that she will represent me in that way where she, she always thinks of me like that. She actually got my dog on the Today Show as well. He was modeling, like, dog shoes. Um, you mentioned earlier that you had your eye on Martinez and Colope, but who, who, who would you want first? Well, you know, who's the most likely guy I can probably get? Darren Barker probably, you know, he's right now, um, you know, fighting Felix Sturm. So, you know, uh, I only can just take it one day at a time and not want too much. Because let me tell you something, nothing is possible unless I f look good against Gabby, you know, and put on a spectacular performance, which I'm planning on doing. But, you know, only time I'm going to be able to tell that Saturday night. That's why everybody want to see this fight, to be able to see what I'm able to do. Now, with this network, he's promising HBO and your show you think that will happen? Oh, well, of course not. If not, we can go back to free TV and, you know, let's see if we can get some endorsement to make up with the end of, of you know, what the, the networks is paying the fighters now. And, you know, I'll be willing to fight on free TV for, for the fans and get my name out there and build my brand. Um, there's no problem with that. But, you know, for right now, I know I got the best people working for me, you know, Al Heyman. You know, a lot of whatever people want to say about Al, I'll make sure that I was a, a champion and I'm able to be delivering my performances to you guys. Without him, I don't think nothing is possible for me right now at this point. And getting the light that I got on me, I'm just glad that he believes in me and have Golden Boy, you know, promote my fights and having the same managers from the beginning. I mean, it's like all a true blessing to, to be able to break bread and, you know, share wisdom and gain knowledge and j just move on and strive on. Let's talk about your training. Uh, are you in animal status right now? Yeah, I've been in animal. I, I never leave animal status, you know, um, especially in the fight. I think I'm going to be at the pink of animal just status because that's what we train so much for to be able to go. Look, I never said that I'm Superman. I never said I was the most uh, talented fighter out there. I, I just know I'm a fighter with a lot of effort. And I know I train very hard, not to look like Superman in a training camp, but look like Superman for one hour of the fight. That's all I look like. And, you know, we training for that. And y'all can see what I've been doing in my past fights. And, you know, hopefully we could cre create, create moments like that. Is he on your radar, though? Is he a guy that you're looking at as possibly your next opponent? Well, you know, like Al Heyman handled all the business for me and just and, and Golden Boy puts out the opportunities for me and all I have to do is just say yes or, you know, how much money I'm going to get paid or, you know, is what, what what comes with this? What's what's going to be next after the fight? I think a, a lot goes into to to being a boxer and I, especially me, I look at myself when I enter to try to be the best boxer I can be. Once I get out of the ring, I try to be the best businessman I can be. I want to pay my taxes. I want to make sure that I can be compensated for whatever time I'm putting into this. What about that fight here in New York? How big would that be, say, at the Barclays Center, you you and Danny? Uh, that would be a, a, a good fight. He's from Brooklyn. I'm, I'm, I'm just a visitor in his backyard, So, um, but I represent Brooklyn very proudly because I know there's a lot of people and I'm friends with a lot of people that, you know, is going through the same struggles I've been through in Grand Rapids. They don't have any positive role models letting them know that, you know, 
you know, the hood is just the hood, but the mentality of the people, you can bring that anywhere and you still will be in the hood. I don't care if you go to a nice neighborhood, if you had the mentality in the hood and you're just gonna have the hood with you. So uh, I'm just letting people know you can not think different, you can not fight for what you want, and you can not work hard to accomplish the things that you wanna do in life. You see him, him being the same fighter as he was before he got sick and now he's been back for I think, several fights. I mean, what do, you, what do you see from Danny just watching him now compared to how he was before? Listen, he has a fight that he fought, which is cancer that, you know, I cannot understand that fight. I just know it's a serious fight because, you know, I know a lot of people that lost their lives to, to cancer. It's not nothing, something to play around with. So I believe you've seen what happened to Omar Henry. Very sad, you know, like seeing him deteriorate right on his Instagram was like the most saddest moment I ever seen in boxing. So I can never understand that. So I know when people go through like a go through a struggle and adversity in their life that they become back either they come back weak and they can't handle the struggle or they come back stronger. And I think Danny with the whole cancer thing came back stronger and now he's out there trying to pull and he got a positive message to, to go out there and, and, and let cancer survivors know that you can do things. And boxing is like one of the things that, you know, a lot of people are not able to do, but it gives somebody a, a, a sense of hope and inspiration that they can do whatever they want. Thanks.